Welcome back to the Deep Six Wrestling Podcast. I'm Pat, for those who don't recognize my voice. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the podcast as we cover AEW, WWE, Impact, New Japan, sometimes Stardom. Uh, we're going to be covering old school TNA soon. So we have plenty of stuff that we have on uh, on our coverage. We do predictions for pay-per-views and for, for tournaments, and we have punishments for those. You can browse our channel on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube for all of that. If you're listening on the podcast feed uh, on a streaming service like Apple, Stitcher, Overcast, Breaker, please also consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, or, you know, just subscribe on the streaming service and come back and check out every episode. For those who haven't peeped it, on our YouTube channel, we do have an exclusive video, which is our uh, our review for Death Before Dishonor, the, the latest Ring of Honor pay-per-view under Tony Khan. Uh, it was released on our YouTube channel, and it will only be there. So if you want to listen to our thoughts on Ring of Honor's pay-per-view, you have to go to our YouTube channel. Uh, with that being said, we are in the midst of the New Japan G1 Climax, and we have reviews out for nights 1 through 7 already. We are right up on it. We're up to date. We have not fallen behind. I should say I have not fallen behind because I'm the one covering the G1 Climax. Uh, tonight is Thursday, so there's going to be Impact. So Ryan and Angel's Impact Power Hour is back, and it will be coming. Uh, it'll be coming out tomorrow, most likely. And then we also have Rob's SmackDown reviews, which should continue this week. So uh, you got that, and then SummerSlam is on Saturday. We'll probably do a review for that show. So. Plenty of content coming your way uh, on the podcast feed as well as our YouTube channel. So please consider subscribing on YouTube. We are closing in on 200 subscribers, so we're hoping to hit that milestone in the in the near future. Um, so thank you to all of the new people who have subscribed to the channel. We appreciate you greatly. Um, feel free to comment on all the videos. We will interact with you. We'll talk to you. We'll even mention them on the podcast. So if you want to leave a comment, we appreciate that as well. You can also follow us over on Twitter, at Deep Six Wrestling, without the G. There's no G at the end, just Deep Six Wrestling. Uh, if you type in Deep Six and then start writing wrestling, you'll probably find us. Uh, we tweet out, you know, when we put podcasts out and if there's going to be any changes to the schedule. So if you want to stay up to date with us, that's the best way to do so. Uh, it is Thursday, though, which means AEW Dynamite was last night. It was the July 27th edition of the show, and it was Fight for the Fallen. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so sit back, relax, and let's talk about AEW, which kicked off with the AEW Interim World Championship on the line as John Moxley would be defending against Roosh of the La Faction in uh which is Roosh, Andrade, and Jose. Um, this comes after Death Before Dishonor, where Roosh faced off against Dragon Lee in uh, a show-stealing match that was really only... Um, overshadowed by FTR versus the Briscoes. The the two men just had an incredible encounter, and I, I hope to see more Dragon Lee and Ring of Honor and AEW moving forward. But with Roosh getting a victory there, uh, somehow it earned him a shot at Moxley's title. I'm not going to complain. Uh, you know, I like that Moxley's getting a bunch of defenses here. It was supposed to be the summer of Punk, but we're getting the summer of Moxley, and I, uh, I can't complain. As Moxley finishes his entrance here to start the match, uh, Roosh attacks him, and the two start off hot with Roosh nailing some body splashes and a drop kick to the back before biting at Moxley's head. Uh, sends Moxley to the floor, and Mox is now busted open. Roosh takes some of Moxley's blood in a disgusting act here and licks it off his fingers uh, into the camera. Uh, we have a snap suplex from Moxley on the floor after Roosh fails to use the chair with interference from Jose the assistant. Uh, we get headbutts from the the champion as he slams Roosh's face fir uh, slams Roosh face first onto the steel stairs before rolling him back into the ring. Roosh and Mox then deliver some huge slaps to each other's chest before Roosh catches Moxley with a quick power slam for a two count. He drags Moxley back to ringside and Roosh grabs some camera cables and then uses it to choke out Moxley uh, as we head into the commercial break. Back from commercial, Roosh and Moxley are up on the top rope. And Mox lands a superplex off the top. We have a chop battle that breaks out in the ring with the lively crowd doing the uh, the yay and boo chant for each man. And they just pick up the face so the crowd's going crazy with this. Uh, and props to the crowd in Worcester, Massachusetts, I think, or wherever Worcester is. I, or what, whatever the place they were in. Great crowd. Uh, they were phenomenal pretty much all night. 
Um, we have a snap German suplex from Roosh, uh, followed by a German from Moxley, and then a discus, lari- a discus lariat from Roosh, and then a, f- uh, a King Kong lariat from Moxley. Uh, just these two are going blow for blow here. Uh, Roosh counters Moxley on the ropes with another German suplex, and then both men go down as the crowd goes nuts. This is, again, these two just, this is very hard hitting, very fast pace. Great stuff. Uh, a cross face gets locked in from Roosh. Mox has to bite the wrist to get out before unloading on Roosh's face with the Danielson style uh, like face stomps. Uh, we have a belly to belly suplex from Rush that lands uh, and sends Moxley into the turnbuckle as he puts Mox onto the top then and Mox then has to bite uh, at Roosh to send him down. Jose then throws the tablet into the ring for the distraction, which allows Andrade to run out, and he crotches Moxley on the top rope as the Lucha Brothers run out to chase Jose and Andrade off. Uh, This lets Moxley get a roll-up for a a near fall. The Bull's Horns gets looked for, but Moxley comes back with a clothesline. A straight uh, straight jacket pile driver lands from Roosh for a big near fall. This looks nuts. And Moxley crawls to the corner. The Bulls Horns gets looked for again, but Moxley slides out of the way at the last second. Sleeper from Mox, but Roosh pops off with a reverse headbutt. Death Rider from Moxley, and they do call it the Death Rider. And Roosh kicks out at 2.9 for a huge reaction. Moxley locks in the Bulldog choke, and Roosh goes out. John Moxley wins and retains the interim or the AW Interim World Championship. I thought this was a fantastic opener. Um, you know, Roosh came into AEW. He had the match with Penta, which I think was meh, not the, the most spectacular match. And he was in the Royal Rampage and didn't have the best showing there. Then he had the match with Dragon Lee at Death Before Dishonor. And then this match with Moxley. And it just feels like he's been improving and improving uh, with each outing. So that's exciting. I thought, um, thought Moxley did great here. He continues to be just an absolute unit and just uh, uh, delivering th- at the top of his game. And I, I do think that Andrade and Roosh, uh, we haven't seen Andrade wrestle for a bit, but I believe he's dealing with injury and is prepping to make his return for the Ric Flair's uh, retirement match. So, but I just feel like they feel more important than Andrade has in a while, so that's that's promising. <clears throat> I don't really know where exactly these two go, but we do have the trios tournament, and there are two of them, plus they have Jose, so I don't know if the three of them could enter the trios tournament possibly, or if they would introduce Dragon Lee as the third member of La Faction in Gobernable, and then the three of them would enter. But regardless, I, I think Andrade and Roosh are, are feeling like um, bigger bigger names than they, they were before, uh, coming off of Death Before Dishonor and then this match. So I was a fan. I thought this was a great opener for Dynamite. Post-match, Chris Jericho makes his entrance, and he's accompanied by, uh, so it's Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, Ty Conti, uh, and Anna Jay here. And uh, Anna Jay comes out and says that she's now going, she, she's Anna J-A-S, and screams that she's going to choke out everyone in the arena, saying, I'll choke you out, I'll choke you out, I'll choke you out, and uh, honestly, it's pretty funny. Uh, the delivery of it, was, she didn't like feel like she had the most confidence in like the heel character, but I could see Jericho um, helping her with that. Uh, so hopefully she can get to there because I thought you know it was it was pretty funny. Um, we also had oh, and Angelo Parker was here too as he came out and told the AEW Galaxy to appreciate us, uh, which what what a time to be alive. Uh, Jericho says that he is going to challenge Moxley at Quake at the Lake in two weeks, and that he will be the first ever two-time AEW Le Champion. Moxley says that he is the first uh, two-time champion, <clears throat> and that he is no longer the interim champion, which is obviously setting up for, uh, you know, Moxley and CM Punk when he comes back. Moxley says that he doesn't want the sport, uh, sports entertainment bullshit version of Jericho. He wants it to be John Moxley versus the last survivor of the Heart Dungeon, Lionheart Chris Jericho. So, uh, I'm glad they're doing this on TV and that this is not John Moxley's All Out match. That would have been disappointing um, should CM Punk not be ready to go for All Out in Chicago. Um, so, doing this for a TV show, I'm perfectly fine with as the main event. It is a pretty big match, um, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm down with it. And again, uh, I do actually like the heel turn for Anna Jay. I don't really think she was doing much as a babyface. 
um, and I feel like her and Ty work well together. So I'm curious to see how they're both going to work as heels, as like a heel duo. Um, but tonight, I thought she was funny, just needs some more confidence. And <laughs> Angelo Parker's Roman Reigns parody was uh, pretty great, not going to lie. Uh, we go backstage, and we have Dante Martin, and he says that uh, tonight for his match with Sammy Guevara... He's going to have Sky Blue in his corner to combat Ty at ringside. So the first time that we are seeing Dante Martin and Sky Blue acknowledged as an on-screen couple in AEW, I believe. Um, yeah. After the Dante Martin promo, <clears throat> we would head to the ring for the FTW Championship match, which was a uh, it's coming off of the Open Challenge last week where Ricky Starks defended against Cole Carter, the former Two Dimes from NXT 2.0. Uh, he would then ask for a new opponent. Dan Housen would come out to shock him, and Starks would say that he's not ready, and so this match would be pushed to this week. Uh, so Ricky Starks versus Dan Housen. Prior to the match, we would get a, uh, a really nice video for, da uh, for not for Dan Housen, for Ricky Starks, very similar to uh, the vignettes that he was doing prior to signing with AEW. Uh, I do hope that coming out of this, we do get more of these, because I think they're very well produced, um, and they make him feel more unique. Uh, at the beginning here, Danhausen does the Ricky Starks pose and goes for the curse, but uh, Ricky boots him in the face, and then Starks does his uh, his signature pose. We have a pump kick from Danhausen and a Northern Light suplex for a two count. Uh, the Enzigiri from Starks, uh, he goes in, uh, he gets sent into the turnbuckle uh, by Danhausen, and then sells his his neck issues as Danhausen rolls him up for two. Uh, and then we have a spear from Starks that just flattens Dan Housen, and Ricky Starks wins in a, a very short amount of time here, which is what it needed to be. This did not need to go long, but they did nice to tease that Dan Housen could have gotten the, the shocking upset here. Post-match, Ricky Starks gets on the mic as Taz says, what's he doing? And uh, he says that he wants a real challenger this time. The crowd goes wild and starts chanting for Hook. Hook's music hits, and he gets a huge pop, and they go even more crazy as... Taz uh, talks about how surreal it is that um, that that Hook is going to be challenging for the FTW Championship, and Hook is even wearing orange, which is obviously Taz's colors. And so we get it: Ricky Starks for, versus Hook for the FTW Championship. Hook unloads hard, fast body shots to Starks, and then lands a headbutt. A back suplex from Hook drops Starks as the crowd cheers loudly for Hook. The spear lands from Starks, but he goes for the Rochambeau instead of pinning him. Hook transitions from that into the red rum, and Ricky Starks taps out. Hook is the new FTW champion, and this crowd went ballistic for Hook winning this belt. Uh, after the match, Hook and Ricky bump fists, and then we go to commercial break. As we come back from commercial, we get a recap of what just happened, which is uh, something you don't really see with AEW, so uh, appreciate it that they did it for this. Uh, and Tony Schiavone's in the ring with Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs, and he puts over his work as FTW champion, saying that he was told that the title win uh, was going to be a noose, but he elevated himself. And uh, it was very clear that this crowd was very behind Ricky Starks. He got a really good promo here. And uh, Powerhouse Hobbs then shockingly lays out Ricky Starks from behind and beats him, beats him down. We have the, the, the split here of Team Taz. Uh, Hook has not really been with Team Taz for a bit. He's been just off on his own. And now Ricky and Hobbs are broken up. Uh, so, very intriguing direction here. Uh, as we appear to be going towards Powerhouse Hobbs versus Ricky Starks. And potentially a major push for Ricky Starks as he has now dropped the FTW Championship, which was kind of holding him in the mid-card. Um, so, for fans of Hobbs and Starks, I think this is probably a good move. They were a fantastic tag team, but I think both guys have much more upside as single stars. And... I, uh, I, d I don't see this as a negative. I think this is a really big positive for Ricky Starks. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm excited. Uh, the Acclaimed are backstage talking about the rap battle from Rampage. I did not watch the last week's Rampage, so I did not see this, but they say that they're going to roast the gun club once again. Sammy Guevara with Ty Conti versus Dante Martin with Sky Blue. Uh, Dante, Dante taunts Sammy, hitting his signature poses and uh, being a bit of a showboat here, showing some more personality, which is always good. Uh, Sammy gets sent to the floor and Dante teases a suicide dive, but he flips off the ropes for a moonsault as Sammy's coming back into the ring. And Sammy just uh, looks a bit, you know, flustered here before sliding out of the ring and grabbing Ty. And they both head up the ring as he's going to go for the count out. 
Dante chases him down and then sends Sammy off the stage before hitting a huge dive off of the stage onto Sammy uh, as we get a holy shit chant here. Uh, back from commercial, Dante sends Sammy to the floor and then springboards down, uh, getting caught with a knee from Sammy as he comes down to the floor. Sammy comes back, flying over the top rope with a crazy-looking flipping dive. We have a standing Spanish fly that lands from Guevara but only gets a two-count back in the ring. A backslide from Dante as he ca uh, counters out of the GTH. Um, we have Dante flipping over Sammy, and he lands a wild-looking face buster for a two-count. Dante looks for the nosedive, but Sammy runs up to meet him. Dante flips out of uh, Sammy's superplex and hits his own Spanish fly for two. Dante then hits a sit-out full Nelson bomb for another near fall. Ty screams at Dante for the distraction. Um, and then we get the nosedive being looked for once again. But Sammy evades and lands a springboard cutter and the GTH. And Sammy Guevara wins. Um, for a match that had like no build or reason for existing on this show, they had a really fun match, I thought. And I, I like that Dante Martin showed more personality. My one downside would be that... <laughs> Sky Blue felt like she did absolutely fuck all. Uh, I was expecting her and Ty to get into it for, you know, like Ty distracting Dante, but she just kind of stood there. Um, in the post-match, Sammy lays the boots into Dante, and he invites Ty to do the same, uh, and she does. And uh, Sky eventually comes into the ring to prevent Sammy from hitting like a 450. And uh, then her and Ty finally get into it before Anna Jay runs down and lays out Sky with uh, Ty Conti uh, for a two-on-one beatdown. Uh, Ruby Soho, Ortiz, and Eddie Kingston run down to chase the threesome off, and uh, that was that. So, um, And it would be announced later that Ruby Soho is back from her storyline injury. Um, so it does appear that we are going to, I would assume, be getting eventually Ruby Soho and Sky Blue versus Ty Conti and Anna Jay. Um or some type of mixed tag match with Dante and Sky versus Sammy and Ty. Or some type of mixed tag with, like, Sammy, Ty, and Anna versus uh, Dante, Sky, and Ruby. I don't know. Uh, or Eddie, maybe. Um, so we'll see. But uh, this does seem to be just the, uh, the latest of things going on here. Uh, we go to the back for Daniel Garcia, who cuts this this ridiculous promo where he, he he claims that tonight when he beats Brian Danielson, he will become the best technical sports entertainer in the world. Uh, say what you will about the Jericho Appreciation Society, if you love him or hate him, but one thing that it has done is given us the fantastic, the, the wonderful character of sports entertainer Daniel Garcia. It, this man delivers some of the, the most ridiculous, but great lines in AEW on a consistent basis um <clears throat> back from commercial break after the garcia promo we're backstage with sanjay dutt satnam singh and jay lethal who are talking about death before dishonor uh the best friends roll up and we get a trios match set up with coked up sanjay dutt screaming about how he's gonna get in the ring to beat their asses and then after the best friends leave uh, he realizes that he can't get back in the ring uh, due to injuries and freaks out uh, about how he's going to perform in this match. Uh, so, But this is going to happen on Rampage. We're getting Satnam, Sanjay, and Lethal versus the best friends. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Sanjay gets physical or takes any bumps. I don't know if that's possible. Again, he has said that he, he would not wrestle again due to injuries, at least for the foreseeable future. So um, we'll see if he actually does or, or what happens. Jungle Boy, after making his return last week, comes out for a promo here. And he has Luchasaurus with him as he joins Tony Schiavone in the ring for an interview. Uh, he grabs the mic and shouts that Christian Cage is the biggest pussy he has ever met. And that he had to listen to Christian Cage's bullshit about his family before congratulating uh, Cage on becoming the most relevant he's ever been in years. Uh, he doesn't understand why Christian hates him for... Um, uh, for, for eliminating from a battle royal over a year ago uh, talking about how Christian was talking about needing the winning bonus and then Jungle Boy says that then he realized that Christian Cage was strapped for cash because his wife had just divorced him uh, and then signals for Christian's ex-wife to give him a call uh, which got a huge reaction from the crowd this is pretty good stuff from Jungle Boy uh, he clowns Christian for the turtleneck and having a small dick and says that Cage needed a monster, but he looked to Jungle Boy's best friend 
Jungle Boy says that he can uh, he can take anything Cage throws at him, verbally or physically. And he notes that three years ago, he was standing in a dirt hole as he dug his father's grave. Christian then appears on the big screen and cuts him off, saying that he ran away last week because he was scared of what he was going to do to Jungle Boy if he stayed around when, uh, when Jack returned. And he says the next thing he's going to cover Jungle Boy with is a body bag, and that he's going to let Jungle Boy cozy up to his father's dead body in the grave. Uh, so this uh, this is a big program. I would assume that these guys aren't going to face until All Out. I, if I was AEW, I would save this for the pay-per-view. Um, Christian has become a ridiculously good heel. I definitely feel like this is something that you should wait on um, if I was AEW. So we'll see. Following the Jungle Boy promo, we cut to the back and we see the Young Bucks and Brandon Cutler as they are talking about the AEW Trios titles, which were revealed earlier in the night, and they announced that there will be a tournament to crown the first champions uh, that will finish at All Out in September. Uh, this is coming off the back of the report that the plan for the pay-per-view was a match between the Undisputed Elite and the Elite, with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks versus Red Dragon and Adam Cole. We'll see if that is the case. There are still a number of other ways that the the titles could go down um when aw first announced the aw world tag team titles back in 2019 a lot of people assumed the young bucks were going to win them but for anybody who remembers private party upset them i believe in the first or second round of the tournament um and so who knows maybe we could see uh a, a shock and we don't go that direction so we'll see and there are a number of other teams that i think could be viable contenders for becoming the first trios champions um, but they, uh, as they're backstage, they run into Hangman Page, which gets a big reaction from the crowd. They, uh, wish Hangman a happy birthday, uh, and then the Dark Order shows up, and they, they bring broccoli for Hangman because they didn't have cake, and we have a very awkward encounter between them as the Young Bucks walk off and tell Cutler to shut off the camera. So, setting the stage for either the Young Bucks and Hangman, or, or some type of confrontation when, uh, when Omega comes back. Hangman is kind of directionless, so could we see the uh, the Elite reunite, obviously, minus Cody, um, with Kenny, Hangman, and the Bucks? Who knows? Uh, this would, honestly, would have been perfect if Roderick Strong had gotten out of his NXT deal, because then you could have had four on four with Kenny, Hangman, and the Bucks versus the actual full Undisputed Era. But, alas, our man is stuck in NXT 2.0. After this, we would go to Swerve Strickland versus Tony Nese and Mark Sterling in a handicap match. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I did not take notes. Uh, I was actively trying to catch up on my notes for the rest of the show, uh, but this finished with Swerve murdering Mark Sterling um, for the win. And then uh, as he was celebrating, the camera would cut backstage to Josh Woods uh, from Ring of Honor standing over Keith Lee, who was beaten down. And then Nice lays out Swerve. And Woods and Nice pick up the tag titles. So it looks like we have a new team here with Mark Sterling managing Tony Nice and Josh Woods as they appear to be entering the AEW tag team division. Um, I like Josh Woods from what I've seen. I think he should be a good fit for AEW. Uh, I really enjoy Tony Nice as a wrestler. I think he's a wonderful talent and I think he is vastly underrated and has always been vastly underrated. Um, his work on 205 Live is really great stuff. So uh, I'm excited for this, this new team, and I think that like the, their, their dynamic probably will be a very interesting one, opposite of Swerve and Keith Lee, who've become a very well-oiled machine. Um, so I'm excited for this. I think this could be a fun one. Uh, I will say they do have to do a bit of building here to really establish Woods and, and Nice as a team, whether it's on Dark or Rampage or whatever. Um, you know, I, the, like... They've, I don't think they've ever tagged before, so we need to actually see them tag um, before they get a title shot, I would assume. Uh, we have a House of Black promo from Malachi and Brody King, as <laughs> Malachi states that we live in a society where people worship nothing of value and that the god and the devil are the same. Uh, he states that himself and Miro do the same thing, uh, with Miro claiming to redeem while Malachi balances good and evil. And he states that he will put Miro on a throne and make everyone kneel to him if he joins them. Uh, Brody King then talks about uh, Darby Allen, saying that the reason he attacks and humiliates Darby in public is because he can. And he says that he's going to bury Darby Allen and that he is challenging Darby to a coffin match. 
Uh, so the coffin match is coming back. Another big singles match here with Brody and Darby. Darby doesn't lose these, so... Uh, and Brody already got the, the big win over Darby, so I'd assume Darby's getting his win back on this one. Uh, we've, he, he won the first one against Ethan Page. He beat Andrade. And I'm probably going to assume he beats Brody King here. Um, we get a little, uh, a little video here for Pac and Thunder Rose's recent, uh, international matches on AEW Dark with Pac's All-Atlantic Championship defense recently against LJ Cleary, uh, LJ Cleary and, uh, Thunder Rosa versus Miyu Yamashita from Tokyo Joshi Pro. So, uh, nice that they showed little clips of these. Uh, Thunder Rosa versus Miyu Yamashita for the AEW Women's World Championship would be next. Um... Rosa, uh, off the bat, gets uh, sent to, into the turnbuckle, but she evades and hits an arm drag on uh, Miyu before uh, Miyu then comes back and hits her own. Roll-ups get uh, traded for near falls as we get a standoff after both fail to get su a successful pin. Rosa boots Yamashita and drops to her knees for a slap, but Miyu catches her hand and then sends Rosa to the apron before getting caught with knees from the champion. Rosa goes for a suplex, but Miyu gets out and cuts the leg out from Thunder Rosa. Uh, and then comes off the apron and eats a drop kick from Rosa. We have Thunder Rosa putting Yamashita against the barricade for a very hard chop. As uh, Miyu then does a like a step up off the apron for a big kick to Rosa that looked pretty cool. Uh, and that sends us in the commercial break. And when we come back, Rosa comes down with a forearm in the corner to a seated Yamashita before nailing her with two drop kicks. Uh, a Northern Lights suplex is then hit from Thunder Rosa, which gets a two count. Miyu and Rosa then go counter for counter with a roundhouse kick landing for Miyu, a hard kick from Rosa against the ropes. Uh, Yamashita blocks a roll-up and counters with a really good-looking German suplex for a, a pretty good reaction from the crowd. Uh, Miyu goes for another roundhouse kick but misses. The fire, driver, uh, fire thunder driver fails to deliver, but the skull kick lands from Miyu, but Rosa gets to the ropes to prevent the uh, pin. More roll-ups get some two-count near falls for both women as Rosa eats hard kicks to the face before nailing a jumping knee strike. Rosa hits her own kick to the head and then nails the Fire Thunder driver and Thunder Rosa retains. Um, I know a lot of people were hoping that this was going to get the main event slot, myself included, but uh, all things considered, when, when this match was done, I think they made the right call with going with Danielson and Garcia. Not that this was a bad match, but it lacked the... It lacked the, the love and excitement from the crowd that the main event had. Um, so, um, yeah, I just... Like, again, I thought this was good, not great. Uh, there was some sloppiness early on in the match, and something just really feel like it... Really felt like it didn't click fully with these two. But I still think it was pretty good for what it was. Uh, I do think with, like one or two promos on TV, this could have been a little bit better, uh, in terms of, like, crowd, uh, being into it, but I thought the crowd, for the most part, was giving good reactions to what they were given, so, um, not too bad, um, and still a good match, not the weakest thing on the show, that would probably be Swerve versus Tony and Mark, um, so, yeah, it is what it is. After that, we would get our, uh, match rundowns for the next couple of shows, with Rampage this week featuring, uh, Ethan Page versus Leon Ruffin, Anna Jay versus Ruby Soho, Lee Moriarty versus Matt Seidel, and Trio's action with Satnam Singh, Sanjay Dutt, and Jay Lethal versus the Best Friends. Next week on Dynamite, we have Thunderstorm versus Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter, which uh, should be a fairly big match for the women's division. Uh, the Undisputed Elite returns with uh, a graphic advertising the Young Bucks, Red Dragon, and Adam Cole. And then in two weeks at Quake at the Lake, we have AEW. Or sorry, we have John Moxley versus Chris Jericho for the AEW Interim World Championship. And then it was also announced that AEW will be making their Canadian debut in October. Um, so pretty big news there. And that would send us into our main event, which was Brian Danielson versus Daniel Garcia, uh, with some more Blackpool Combat Club versus uh, Jericho Appreciation Society stuff. Uh, Danielson is mega over as expected and he immediately takes it to Garcia as he gets in the ring uh, just bringing down kicks in each of the corners as the crowd goes wild for Danielson they go nuts um, with the, the you're gonna get your fucking head kicked in chant uh, Garcia takes control and eventually tears the ring mats up at ringside but Brian lights him up with kicks and puts him on a chair at ringside and it's a, a hard drop kick that uh, just sends Garcia basically through a barricade at ringside 
Danielson sends Garcia back into the ring and drops him with a diving uh, uh, um, diving drop kick off the top rope. Uh, Brian sells some damage to the head, possibly playing up a concussion. And Garcia goes to the floor. He sends him into the ring steps head first and then drops Brian with a DDT on the concrete, uh, which just kills this crowd because they're like, oh, f- fuck. Um, really good stuff here. Uh, back from commercial, Danielson's busted open as Garcia controls the match. He nails a drop kick to the ribs before stomping out Brian. Uh, he places him in the corner. Garcia fires off with a chop as he shows Danielson's bloody face to the audience as they come down with booze on him. He just claws at the cut um, before Brian fires off a forearm and then gets repeat- uh, repeatedly booted by Daniel Garcia. Brian manages to take down Garcia with a superplex off the top, but both men go down as Brian sells the head um, that he came down like on the back of his head here. Danielson then goes crazy with offense and eventually nails a, a brutal suplex as he looks for the Busaiku knee, but Garcia evades. Uh, Garcia goes for a Scorpion Deathlock, but Danielson rolls him up for two. We have a strike exchange breaking out again, and Danielson just kills Garcia with the Busaiku knee before going for the Lobel Lock, but Garcia gets to the ropes. Uh, a diving knee off the apron connects from Brian as he sends Garcia back in, but from under the ring, someone grabs at Brian's knee and prevents him from getting in. Garcia manages to get his hands on Brian, and the pile driver from, uh, lands from Garcia, and he locks in the uh, sharpshooter. Brian Danielson fades and passes out, and Daniel Garcia wins. Uh, this was insane to imagine. Brian Danielson's making his, his heroic comeback, and everybody's like, "Oh, he's just going to beat Daniel Garcia." Garcia just lost at the uh, ROH pay per view to Wheeler Yuta, and then Daniel Garcia wins. Obviously. Uh, there's an asterisk here because he had the assist from, it was revealed to be Jake Hager, but yeah, uh, huge win for Daniel Garcia, beating Brian Danielson in the main event of Danielson's return, um, and I thought they had a wild main event, I thought it was fantastic. Um, the opening and closing matches to the show were, were genuinely great, and showcases for why Danielson and Moxley are two of the best right now. Um, as a whole, I thought this was, uh, an incredibly, incredibly strong dynamite with almost next to no filler the only thing that you probably could have done without was swerve versus tony nice and mark starling but like even that set up the the new team of josh woods and tony nice as future challengers for swerve in our glory so i can't hate on that everything else felt in like important and like there was a reason there was also an emphasis on on new talent here um whether it be Roosh or, or Josh Woods, as well as younger talent um, with Dante Martin, Sammy Guevara, Ty Conti, Sky Blue, Anna Jay, uh, Ricky Starks, Hook, Jungle Boy, um, Daniel Garcia. It was just like very clearly like that there's just like a, a very strong emphasis on the future with this show. And I think that was really strong with just, you know, building up new talent, um, which is definitely a positive. So. Uh, all in all, I thought this was a, a, a great episode of Dynamite. Um, one of the best shows they've had in a couple of weeks, I would say. Um, and, and yeah, if you haven't watched it, go out of your way to watch Roosh versus Moxley and Danielson versus Garcia as the two matches coming out of this because those two are both genuinely great wrestling matches that everybody should see. Uh, That's it. That's Dynamite. That's the review. So thank you for joining me. If you made it to the end of this, be sure to leave a like and comment if you're on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to the podcast if you're listening on one of the streaming services. And you can follow us over on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling. Uh, Busy rest of the week with Impact as Ryan and Angela's Impact Power Hour returns with both men. Uh, Ryan and Angela will be reviewing Impact, which is, I believe, featuring the in, or I don't know if it's in ring, but just in arena debut of Killer Kelly. Um, And we are going to have uh, Rob Smackdown review on Friday and most likely a review of SummerSlam this weekend, as well as our continued coverage of New Japan's G1 Climax. So plenty of stuff coming up on the podcast, so be sure to subscribe for all of it. You get it for free. And uh, yeah, so once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Adios.